a young girl stands alone in the snow as dozens of zombies creep toward her. Who will come to her aid? Will a knight in shining armor come to her rescue? Or will she just be left to the mercy of these monsters? <laughs> Neither. Because this isn't just some ordinary girl. This is Giko Nokumura. And the only thing standing between us and total annihilation is her and her chainsaw. This is the story of Chainsaw Sukaban. If you're not sure if you're interested in Chainsaw Sukaban, here's a quick list of things that happen in this manga. Giko fights off a zombie with the ability to shoot out tentacles. A former Nazi scientist comes back as a zombie with the actual power to become a magical girl. An idol singer melts half of her fans, turning them into liquid clones of her. A 10-story mud wrestling zombie girl appears. That's a huge bitch! And a half zombie, half robot girl fights against Giko with rockets that fire out of her cave of wonders. If any of that stuff caught your interest, then congrats, we can probably hang. But also, it means this might be the book for you. I'm your host and slasher trainee, D'Angelo Edwards. And today, we're jumping headfirst, and I mean that literally, into the crazy, bloody world of Chainsaw Sukeban. Alright, let's start slow and drop some backstory on this. With something this big, you don't want to take it in all at once. Unless that's your thing, I don't judge. Chainsaw Sukiban or Chimamare Sukiban Chainsaw, which translates to Blade Delinquent Chainsaw, was created by Rei Mikamoto, a manga artist well known for his work in the Eroguro scene. Now, what is Eroguro, you ask? I'm sure it sounds familiar to some of you guys. And I want you to know Jesus is disappointed in you. But I'm not. It's basically when sexual themes are mixed in with more visceral horror type stuff. I'd say more, but I want to at least attempt to keep monetization on this video. If you want an example of it, I'd say one of the most accessible is Devil Man Crybaby. As Go Nagai, its creator, was also a big player in the Arrow Girl world. But Mikamoto Sensei does things a little differently. And instead of focusing on the erotic stuff, don't believe me, it is there. Just look at how his characters are drawn. He instead uses all the gore, violence, and boobs for humor. And that makes sense to me. All the parts of your brain that process all that stuff are pretty much in the same spot. Like, watch this. Hey, I got those papers. You can't tell because I'm a puppet, but I have an absolute rager. Mikamoto's other works include things like Satan's Sister, a manga about the crazy nun, Big Tits Dragon, which speaks for itself, and Reiko the Zombie Shop, which is his tamest. So it makes sense that this was the only one of his works to get a partial English release, though it remains incomplete. One thing you'll notice about this guy is that he loves drawing girls committing heaps of unorganized violence. Real Chad. Can't be that much fun. <laughs> Oh fuck the hell yes. But by far, my favorite work of his is Chainsaw Sukeban. It's got everything. Zombies, busty delinquent girls, killer cyborgs, and, and British slang. Yeah, I don't know, whoever translated this manga must have been from across the pond. Because the way they talk sometimes is, Oi, I can't see. Move it. Oh, I suddenly dead beat you lot. Sit your arse down. I, I'm sorry, but on a serious note, if you or a family member has been diagnosed as British, 
please call us as you may be entitled to a cash settlement. If diagnosed as American, it's already too late. Shut up and get to the point! Anywho, Chainsaw Sukiban is the story of Giko, a young delinquent girl who was raised in a scrapyard, fighting off the evil Nero, a crazed mad scientist neo-Nazi that wants to take over the world. Aided by her remodeled corpse army, whether you like it or not. Uh, waka waka. <laughs> but unfortunately for her, Giko hates what she's done to her class, which is now mostly comprised of the zombies that Nero made. So, enlisting the aid of the Machine Club, Giko and her newly modified chainsaw decide it's time to take out the trash. I was immediately drawn in by the crazy plot of this thing. Delinquents are also my favorite kind of character, so I was already down to clown. But then you go and add a chainsaw to the mix? I don't know why, but whenever a girl wields a chainsaw in something, it always rules. Lollipop chainsaw? Is this a zombie? I don't know, man. Girls and chainsaws go together like me and your mom. The main fun of this series is just seeing what kind of zombies Giko goes up against. I mean, they're technically not zombies but something that Nero calls remodeled corpses. So besides being dead, they usually have something fun added to them. There's one that was given spider legs and she's always late to school, one whose touch causes mold to grow in you from the inside out, and one that is literally just a head. Is that it? Inside of a giant robot. <laughs> yeah! Which the author still points out has D cups. And thank god he did. The fate of this review depended on that information. All of this leads to some pretty crazy fight scenes. It gets intense, dude. I mean, this is a chainsaw after all. It's not something you use when you want a delicate touch. The art has this really loose style, so it flows really well during the action. And I love the way he does eyes, all big and expressive. And the detail he puts into stuff like the chainsaw is awesome, and really helps the relatively more simple character design stand out. Though, some of the still poses can look a bit off. Like, ma'am, are you okay? I don't think your torso should be that wide, even with the size of those blubber nuggets. Hey, they're chewing! I will warn, though, some of the topics this manga deals with aren't exactly family-friendly. I mean, our main villain is a neo-Nazi, what did you expect? If you're squeamish about some of the rougher subjects, maybe sit this one out. Or at least approach it with caution. Some of the jokes might also be in poor taste, like when Nero holds a dude out of the window and he screams, it's the Michael Jackson attack. Alright, that, that's pretty funny, but that's besides the point. It's a sick book with some sick jokes in there. This isn't Big Tits Dragon anymore, this is for grown-ups. And probably 13 year olds. You decide which one you are. But watching all this carnage play out wouldn't be any fun if the characters weren't any good. And man do they deliver. Let's start off with our main character, Giko Nokamura. Giko is your average Tsukiban, or female delinquent. She smokes, skips class, takes baths and steel drums. Never really heard of that one, but it's there. In fact, there's really only one thing that separates her from being a generic mob character. And it's the fact that she is insane. Like, actually psychotic, this chick is full on loony for the lunar. You would have to be to go around cutting down your former classmates with a goddamn chainsaw. She's basically a full on slasher, but she makes Jason look like a bitch. And she loves it. She makes Ashley Williams look like Ashley Tisdale. You need to drop that simp and get you a senpai. But luckily, and because the story requires it, she has a strong sense of justice, and is really only taking on the baddies to get revenge for her class. She's also usually down to lend a helping hand as long as you don't suck. And as long as the blades of her chainsaw keep spinning, she'll never stop slicing. I was surprised at how much Giko grew on me as I kept reading. But her blunt personality, passion for slashing, and, uh, other attributes made me love her in a relatively short amount of time. This manga is not even a hundred chapters, and that's including the sequel. She's the kind of girl dudes scream for to step on them, though most of them start to get scared as soon as they raise their foot. Cowards. Oh well, more for me. 
but a crazy protagonist deserves an equally crazy antagonist. Enter Nero Oi, whose backstory is, and I kid you not, she was always weird but then she read Mein Kampf and decided to make a zombie army. I think you skipped some steps there, but okay, do your thing. She's about as crazy as a soup sandwich and equally brilliant to boot, using her vast knowledge to create her abominations. It's kinda hard to just talk about Nero. You just kinda have to see her in action. She flies into violent rages on a whim, steps on anybody who is willing to get in her way, and she will resort to anything, and I mean anything, to get her way. She's always yelling or evil laughing, and sometimes it's just like, will you sit down for a sec? God, every day with you. But if there's anything that she hates more than not getting her way, it's Giko. Partially because Giko threw up on her one time, long story, but mostly because she keeps getting in her way. No matter what she seems to throw at her, Giko always gets the better of her. Doesn't mean she always loses though, especially since she's harder to kill than a cockroach. She comes back no less than three times over the course of this manga, which makes sense seeing how besides her, there aren't any other real antagonists with her present. Besides, what's better than seeing two crazy girls with huge weapons fight each other? Nothing. Nelson Mandela, 1947. Other than Nero and Giko, we also have the Machine Club, comprised of Senzaki, nicknamed Bucho, which basically translates to manager, and her ever-faithful right-hand Mizushima, whose design I love. She always just looks so cool in her little hat. She's also pretty much in love with Bucho, so bonus points for cute. These guys are great because they're basically just two giant Dusex Machinas, and they don't even try and hide it. Bucho's always screaming, I had planned for that. Good stuff. Giko even recruits some zombies to her side, starting with Kanda, a zombie whose head she cuts off and uses as a guide. Definitely getting lollipop chainsaw vibes here. They must have taken at least a little inspo from Chainsaw Sukiban. It came first. There's also Bakutani, a zombie that's really more cyborg, and the aforementioned owner of the Minge Missile. She starts off as a fearsome enemy, but after some persuasion from Giko, she joins the winning team, and pretty much becomes a main character. Which is fine by me, because I love her. She's so stubborn and in love with Giko that I can't help but love her. Even when I forget that she's one of the most powerful characters in the manga. That's the power of Gap Moe, I guess. You want to know what that is? Look it up. I don't have time to get into the ins and outs of Moe. It would take far too long. Chapter 1, Feudal Japan, 1185 to 1603 AD. There's one more character I want to talk about, and it's only because she's the best character in the series. Drilly! She's this little zombie girl with drills for hands, and she tries so hard, and look at her with her little cell phone. And she's adorable and pure, and one of the best reasons to read this manga. Also, if you didn't know this by now, pretty much every character I've named so far has been a girl. And that's pretty much the status quo for the whole series. There's maybe, like, two important dude characters, and they're really only in the book for a few chapters. Mikamoto Sensei even makes fun of this by introducing this super cool looking guy to the group, who would definitely be one of the main characters in any other manga. But as soon as he shows up, he is immediately decapitated. Guess it's true what they say in this world. You either live and get head, or die and get beheaded. Nelson Mandela, 1947. We'll be back after the break. Hats off. Hey guys, D'Angelo here. Just letting you guys know that the channel's going to be taking some big new steps. Two new shows will be starting. OV Appreciation, where I'll be talking about all the weird OVAs I've seen, and Missing in Action, where I'll be giving some love to some action cartoons I think have fallen by the wayside. So we're launching a Patreon. We're also launching some new shirts. You'll be able to find the link in the description. Remember, every dollar I get is a bullet my intern doesn't get. P please buy the shirts. My bad. That's off. Alright, I've pretty much told you guys all I want to about the manga. Can't tell you everything since I want you guys to read it for yourselves. 
But there is one more thing I wanted to talk about in this series. It's movie. Yep, this crazy manga got an equally crazy movie to boot. And I watched it. I did that for you. Cause I like you a lot. And if you've seen movies like Robo Geisha, or Machine Girl, or Tokyo Gore Police, Oh, uh, I'm sorry, I've been informed that normal people don't watch those kind of movies. My apologies. But if by any chance that you've seen them, then you know exactly what kind of movie you are in for. A cheap, sleazy splatter fest with very little plot, very little clothing. If you can't tell, I keep these movies very close to my heart, as I'm sure the other 12 people that watch them do. The movie is now retitled to Bloody Chainsaw Girl, and both a lot and really nothing was changed. The plot is pretty much the same with a few key differences. In the movie, Giko pretty much wants nothing to do with Nero, or her zombie classmates. In fact, she doesn't even start off with her super chainsaw. She just always brings it to school anyways. Her main goal is to take a makeup test so she can pass her classes. Only really fighting zombies that get in her way of doing that. In fact, the whole movie takes place in this school. Which makes sense. As you can tell, this movie didn't have much of a budget. But for what it's worth, I think they nailed the look of some of the characters. Giko and Nero are pretty much on point. So is Kanda. I just wish that Bakutani looked a little better. She has a pretty unique hairstyle and they tried their best, but I wish it was a bit more convincing. I also don't really care for the cheerleading outfit either. They also reduced the Bucho's role in this movie. Even getting rid of Mizushima, no! Weirdly enough though, they expanded on one of the zombies from the manga that was really just cannon fodder. Though the addition of making them trans might come off a bit problematic in some areas. But I do not have the credentials to talk about that. Just know that this puppet says trans rights. But that's pretty much all I can say about the movie. It's just a super compressed retelling of the source material. That can drag in some areas, but be really cool in others. I just wish they had gotten some more hype music for it. It's kinda silent for a lot of it, and a story this crazy needs some equally crazy butt rock to go with it. At least the author liked it though. He even did a special chapter in the manga where he talks about it praising the actor's work, which I will say the two lead girls seem to be having a lot of fun in their roles. And it leads to some pretty funny moments in the film. So all in all, while not a perfect movie, it's something you might want to throw on at like midnight. Crack open the cold one and laugh at the absurdity. But to be honest, the real absurdity is that they gave this thing two more movies. That's right, a whopping three years later, Bloody Chainsaw Girl Returns Parts 1 and 2 came out. And it looks like an equally stupid fun time, if not more so. The reason I say looks like is because I can't find the freaking thing. And it sucks because it looks like this one sticks way closer to the manga. And Drilly's in it. It's a 10 out of 10 by default. So if any of you guys have a hookup, please let me know. I need it. And so... That's Chainsaw Sukiban, a weird, violent, horny as heck manga that stole my heart. This is the kind of stuff that I live for, dude. And I don't get stuff that feels tailor-made for me all that often. Is it perfect? Heck no. It's super problematic, and to be honest, it just kind of stops after a while and leaves you in a puff of smoke with only the cab fare it left you on the nightstand. But the fact that it even exists is a miracle, because it just goes to show you that there's a market for everything. If you think your idea is too weird or too out there, just remember that Chainsaw Sukiban exists, and it got three movies! It won't change your worldview or make you a better person or anything. In fact, there's a chance it'll make you worse. But one man's trash is another man's treasure.
Though in this case, it's more like, I treasure this trash. I feel like it had to inspire Chainsaw Man just a little bit. Although, Chainsaw Man is definitely a lot deeper. But, while Chainsaw Man is like a deep conversation with a friend at 3am, Chainsaw Sukiban is more like drinking beers with the boys at 1. Everyone's having a great time cracking stupid jokes and it feels like the good times are never gonna stop. So yeah, Chainsaw Sukiban is a bloody good time. And even with all the blood, boobs, and beheadings, I don't think it warped me in any way. If, if you guys could maybe give me a, a minute, um, I'm gonna beat off now. You watched it, you can't unwatch it.